Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x equals f of 1 minus x plus x squared all over 2. And we're going to be solving or finding an expression for f of x. So, to be able to solve this problem, let's go ahead and first cross multiply. So, that's going to give us 2 f of x equals f of 1 minus x plus x squared. And then I want to go ahead and put all both f's on the same side. So subtract f of 1 minus x. And you're going to get the following. So this is our equation. And we're trying to find an expression for f of x by using substitution. So and the idea to solve this problem is basically replacing x with 1 minus x. Why? You might be asking. Well, one of the reasons is we have f of 1 minus x in the expression. So if you replace x with 1 minus x, f of 1 minus x is going to come up again. But we also have to check what's going to happen with f of 1 minus x when we replace x with 1 minus x. But here's one thing to consider here. If g of x is 1 minus x, then the inverse of g, which you can easily find by like setting this equal to y and solving for x, you're going to get this. Or if you wanna, if you want me to, if you want me to show my steps, add x to both sides. One equals x plus y, and then subtract y. You get x equals one minus y. But x equals one minus y is just g inverse of y, because we replace uh, x and y. So g of x equals y. We basically apply g inverse on the left, and when you do, you're gonna get this. Okay, from here. So, but this is g inverse of y. I want to get g inverse of x. So replace the, uh, since I have the following, let me go ahead and rewrite it. g inverse of y equals 1 minus y. Since I need an expression for g inverse of x, just replace y with x. And you can keep doing this. doesn't matter because you can always re replace a variable with another variable, so on and so forth. So this is going to be the inverse of g of x, right? If g of x is... 1 minus x, its inverse is the same thing. And if you also think about it in terms of composition of two functions, g of g of x is just going to be 1 minus 1 minus x, and that is also going to equal x, which is the identity function. Okay, so this, this function, the inverse of this function is itself, which means replacing x with 1 minus x is going to be helpful. But which equation are we going to use? The original one, there's only one equation, by the way. We have 2f of x minus f of 1 minus x. Uh oh, that's a weird x. 1 minus x equals x squared. That's my equation. And now I'm going to replace x with 1 minus x. Let's do it everywhere. So this becomes 2f of 1 minus x. And this becomes f of 1 minus the quantity 1 minus x, but you already know that it's going to become x because those functions are inverses. And the right, right hand side is going to be 1 minus x squared. Now I have two equations, so this becomes a system. And to solve this system, we can actually get rid of f of 1 minus x. And if you think about it, f of 1 minus x is actually comes with different coefficients. It comes with 2 here, right? There's a 2 here. And it comes with a negative 1 here. So in order to eliminate f of 1 minus x, all I have to do is multiply the top equation by 2 and add to the second equation or the bottom equation. But let's go ahead and rewrite what happens here. After multiplication, we get 4f of x minus 2f of 1 minus x equals 2x squared. And let me just copy this equation one more time. 2f of 1 minus x minus f of x equals 1 minus x quantity squared. Remember, the second equation came from the fact that we replace x with 1 minus x, and the first equation uh, was obtained by multiplying the first equation by 2. Anyways, I probably that probably didn't make sense, but hopefully you get the idea. So we're going to use elimination, and let's go ahead and add these two equations. So now... 2 times f of 1 minus x is going to cancel out. We're going to have 4f of x minus 1f of x. That's going to give us 3f of x equals 2x squared plus 1 minus x 
quantity squared. And now we can go ahead and do the following. Expand the perfect square. It's going to be 1 minus 2x plus x squared, which is the same as x minus 1 squared, by the way. And from here we get 3f of x equals, now we have 2x squared and x squared. Their sum is 3x squared. And then minus 2x, if you want to write things in standard form, that's what it looks like. But this is 3 times f of x. And remember, we were looking for an expression for f of x, so we can go ahead and divide both sides by 3. And that's going to give us an expression for f of x, right? Obviously, you can also split it up and kind of write it like more like a polynomial. This is going to be x squared minus 2 thirds of x plus 1 third. All right? All of these forms are fine, but I think the last one is kind of like the simplest one or for some reason it's preferred. So this is f of x, and obviously we can always check our work. Let's go ahead and do that right now real quick. 2f of x minus f of 1 minus x equals x squared. You don't always have to do it, but sometimes it's helpful, especially for high stakes tests. If you have time, it might be helpful because what if you made a mistake and you got the wrong answer? You can hopefully spot your mistakes. But sometimes it's not doable because of the time constraints, so on and so forth. Anyways, so I got this. Let's go ahead and validate our solution by substitution, right? And you can pretty much use any form you want. I don't think it's going to matter that much. Even this one might be a little helpful because it's already in, you know, it's more compact. So, I mean, it's to totally up to you, not too hard. So, let's go ahead and substitute f of x here. And, of course, here too. And see if we can get x squared from there. So, I'm going to work on the left-hand side and see uh, if I get x squared at the end. So, 2 times f of x. That's going to be 2 times x squared minus 2 thirds of x plus 1 third. That's my f of x, minus f of 1 minus x, obviously, that is going to be replacing x with 1 minus x. So that's going to be 1 minus x squared, minus 2 thirds, multiplied by 1 minus x, plus 1 third. Uh, it's a little torturous, but not too bad. Let's go ahead and expand it. 2x squared minus 4 thirds of x, plus 2 thirds. And if you expand it, this is going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1. But when you negate it, minus x squared plus 2x minus 1 is going to be negative 2 thirds plus 2 thirds of x. And finally, minus 1 third. You have to make sure that everything inside the parentheses here is negated, right? Oh, I forgot to negate it because it's supposed to be neg negated one more time because of this. So this is actually going to be plus 2 thirds minus two-thirds of x. So here, let's go ahead and fix this real quick. And then let's see what we get from here, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Now, we should be getting something super simple. So we get 2x squared minus x squared, which is x squared. That's cool. Now we have negative four-thirds of x minus two-thirds of x. That's negative six-thirds times x, which is negative 2x. But negative 2x cancels out with positive 2x. And yay, they all cancel out. We got two thirds plus two thirds, which are four thirds. Four thirds minus one third is three thirds, which is negative positive one. Positive one and negative one are also going to cancel out. So we got rid of the constant two, and we only end up with x squared at the end, which is what we're supposed to have on the right hand side. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video or next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.